Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and today we're going to be covering my little helmet setup, my Kevlar, my uh, great protector, all that good stuff, PVE, airframe stuff. So we got the airframe because, well, Okinawa is ungodly hot and having some passive ventilation is good. Also, it weighs less than the replica, so there's that to take in mind, but I've also had a few things, thoughts going around percolating as to how I want to get this whole setup going and running effectively streamlined full low speed or high speed low drag sort of setup so we got a few things going on we got our goggles here we just detach one of these sides take the cover off clip it back together that's nice safe and simple i have to use the ess goggles not just because i like them but also because i am blind legally i was not born with the uh safe successful good ig my brother got so lucky him but uh now they got lasik now i'll get around to that something in the near future because then i could wear lower profile things like boogie regulators or something, which is actually going to be relevant to this video. So ESS goggles on our little airframe here. Off to the sides, the other main thing we got is our Peltor Comtac 3s from 3M. We got the little rail adapter here. We've also swapped it out from the standard ARC version into the airframe specific little mount. So there's no little tag up here and they actually sit a bit tighter on the ear. This wire just is kind of OFP. It's going to do whatever it wants and look cool I guess. We got our name back there. It's their knight and tiger stripe because that's what we got from the old team. Well I'm perfectly fine with just Cody Brown. That's actually going to bother me because it's at an angle. Okay so that's fixed. So we've got a few things going on to make this all work out pretty well. So I take this. This goes on our dome like so. Oh yeah so internalized. We're still waiting on the actual epic air pads to come in from Team Windy but we do have the cam fit going on, so that's a bit of a improved quality of life, better retention and uh, mounting and everything going on there. So we got this going on. What we just do is just strap this in here. That all looks nice and dandy. We'll actually move the camera up a bit. Excuse me. And yeah, so we got our airframe going. And yeah, it's nice. It's cool. It's breathable. And we can just pull these down here. I'm actually going to turn these on because my voice is going to echo and sound weird. There we go. And then we're going to clip these in place, like so. Those seal onto my ear. Everything sounds nice, muffled, and at the same time, way clearer than it did earlier. Interesting. We're missing a fuzzy here. That's in the mail, too. So no worries. We'll get that fuzzy taken care of. But yeah, so we've got all that cool stuff going on. We've got our headgear here. We've got our goggles. All we got to do is just pull these down with our glasses off, and our eyes and face are protected. So what's missing, oh, noble viewer of our airsoft division, what we need to do is we need to, well, in the words of certain rappers, guard your grill. Not so much with your fist, but more so with a mask. So, we've got our pseudo-generic little mask going on here. It's a basic one. It's got the softer sides with the little ventilation mesh thing going on. But we've modified it by cutting away the back straps and everything. And we've actually taken the little boogie regulator, elite regulators, or boogie, whatever, non-things. We got the bungees with the Velcro on the end. So what this lets us do is what was bothering me for a long time. Initially, I was going to mount the camera off here on the side, but this is a lot more curved than sword ends. So we ended up figuring out a fun solution. So for our mask, all you got to do is most helmet, well, pretty much every helmet worth its weight in salt, has Velcro on the back. So all we got to do is strap this up over here and find a piece of free velcro clink clink and our grill's protected we have minimal interference with our little wires up here because initially we were using the arc rail clips that had to run over the wire huge pain in the uh rear abdominal region so we fixed that now we got velcro the velcro is adjustable and we can still just drop our goggles on and we're fully protected so a very simple streamlined setup now so that's what we got going there. So for the camera wise, this is a bit of the trickier part, is we took one of these uh, mounts here that came with the camera that I figured I'd never use. I tried several things with Velcro at the recommendation of several people. And I mean, the Velcro can work, but inevitably it's going to wobble around and eventually just kind of like fall off. So what we did is we set the camera up this way. We take our little mount here. And we just got to strap that in there. One try. Now, preferably, this would already be set up before I'm trying to 
before I even put the helmet on, so... Come on. You know, it's probably easier to just take the helmet off at this point. Yup, it'd be a lot faster. We'd be saving a lot of time if I just do that. Can you see? I can't see. I have no idea. Come on! It goes in there. You get the idea. Actually, I'll take the mask off. Another nice thing. It comes right off there. Turn these off. Clink, clink. Move back. Pop that off. Take this off. Take camera. Oh, look, there's the mouse. Clink. Slide in there. Helmet goes back on, like so. Clip it in place. And lo and behold. So this is kind of an interesting mount setup, I thought. So it's still going to be a little bit higher, not m too much higher than the top of the helmet naturally. And it's also, this rotates, so this is going to be set up. It doesn't sit on the side of our ear. One of the big problems I used to have is that have this sitting, well, actually right over here, not even on that side, but you start peeking around the corner and my line of sight is pretty much right, going to be right here before I can't see things. Well, not only is the helmet visible, but the camera is this nice little big icon with a little red light that's like, hey, guess what? Um, I'm about to peek around this corner, so if you see me now, now's a good time to start shooting. Complete the Yoda loop before I even know you're there. Before I'm even coming around the corner, just... I'm hit. So, this is the solution. It moves a bit higher. Not so high and forward as a uh, hero, GoPro sort of camera setup, but also not as far off to the side as our older setup. And mounted directly into the helmet means it's not going to come flying off or go anywhere as it could do with Velcro. And we don't need to put any crazy bungee nonsense going on. And it's going to give us a pretty solid line of sight. Well, actually, it should be directly over the gun, so you're going to have a very traditional Doom, Doom 2 sort of a gun view going on if everything works out well. But we're actually waiting on a new gun to even test that, so... Ooh, that's nice. I do like how these uh, contacts go straight to the back. And we've got our new little... This one actually just is a straight built-in NATO plug, so that goes straight into our comm unit, and we're set to do PPT stuff. So yeah, we got our mic going, we'll get our Epic Air Pads, so this actually gets a better fit going to it. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a very, very sexy helmet set up. And, well, guarding your head, I mean, I guess depending on your overall IQ points is going to determine uh, how beneficial it is to you overall. So yeah, I very much enjoy my Brain Bucket Kevlar thing, so hopefully you enjoy the gift of cognition in life as well. And yeah, it's a, just a nice little streamlined overall setup. And particularly, I like how the mask came out. So, if you're trying to get comms and all sorts of crazy stuff going with your uh, headgear, then um, just a few ideas that I took time percolating around, and uh, now I give the knowledge freely unto you. So, use it for evil. As much evil as you can. Just, I don't know, burn down society or something. <laughs> it's a very satisfying click, by the way. So yeah, that's all I had for you guys. I just wanted to kind of give you a little showcase of what I got going on, brain bucket-wise here. And uh, if you are trying to come up with any crazy, interesting ideas, well, there's a very simple and unique... Well, I haven't seen too many people use this mount, actually. And you can click this button here and rotate it! If you, you know, wanted to. It's an option. You don't have to, but... It's something just to make your camera shoot a bit straighter, what have you. And, uh, yeah, so... As always, um, follow the Space Bowl's advice and establish fire superiority. So, that's what I got for you guys. Cheers. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any fun, crazy questions. When I get the boom mic and the actual upgraded padding, I'll probably do another little video because I want to know more and more about the epic air padding from Team Windy because their, um, what you call it, cam fit has been absolutely phenomenal and I love it. So. Cheers everyone, stay chivalrous, I will see you hopefully on the field, but I'm honestly spending more time figuring stuff like this out than actually getting to get trigger time in, so hopefully, hopefully we'll fix that. So, cheers, and um, I'll probably use that as a nice little uh, picture for the end of the video. Here's our thumbnail. Bye!